Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So in the last two videos we covered like an introduction to voltage regulator ICs, which are these things here. And so now this video we're moving on, going up a bit in the world. So we're going to be covering here variable voltage regulators and in particular one called the LM317T, which is this one here. I don't know why mine's always faded, so you can never see it there. Can you see it kind of? Yeah, sure. Just take my word for it, right? <laughs> okay, so if you remember from my introduction video, there are four different types of ICs. So we've got fixed positive, we've got the fixed negative, adjustable, and dual tracking. So if you don't know what that is, uh, check my video two videos ago. Check that out. Watch that video. It's a good video, if I do say so myself. But yeah, so in this one now, we're going to be covering adjustable ones which means that we can basically change the output voltage that we're getting using just the IC. And you can see that my motor on the output here is changing speed as I change the resistance. So all this really means that these ICs here, they're just variable voltage regulators as opposed to fixed regulators. What they do is they use resistors in which you can set the voltage that you want at the output. So here I've got a potentiometer, here I've just got two fixed resistors and then this will give me a specific voltage output or a custom voltage output that I've designed or decided on. So this LM317T, this can output anywhere from 1.2 volts up to 37 volts. Now in terms of how you use it, you're usually going to find it. So this is our schematic for today where I've got my 12 volt VCC and then I've got my LM317 don't worry about the AH, that's just from Multisim, that's a T uh, and then I've got my so V in, V out and adjustable pin so here I've got a voltage divider there I'll talk about how to set those values in a bit voltage divider and then I've got my output voltage here and so I wanted 7.5 volts and I got 7.75 volts at the output now, one thing I do recommend is when it comes to whenever you're dealing with these ICs, I really think it's a good idea to take a look at the data sheet. I've, I was always scared of data sheets, but now that I've been looking at them and I'm like been reading a bit more, it's all started to make a bit more sense and they're actually super helpful. So these three schematics that you can see here or these three circuits that you can see here, if you type in into Google LM317 and then find the data sheet, have a look at it and it will show you Here's a circuit for a basic adjustable regulator, which is the circuit that I've got uh, over here, where I'm controlling the speed of my motor. Then here it's got a slow turn on 15 volt, reg 15 volt regulator, which, you know, just looking at it, like they give you the exact values and everything. So I could easily build that, you know, in no time. Over here, we've got a five volt electronic shutdown regulator. So definitely, you know, take a look at the data sheets for these things. They are scary initially, but you get used to them. So as with all the other ICs that I've looked at, you know, I always like to make the point that in this little chip here, we have this. <laughs> so this is the schematic diagram for the LM317. So obviously there's a whole bunch going on there, whole bunch of transistors, some capacitors, loads of resistors, some diodes, you know, you got a lot going on here. I'm not even going to begin to explain this, but it's just nice to keep in mind that inside this IC is all of these things. One thing you can do, which I did find interesting, and again, on the data sheet, I do really recommend it. They do have a block diagram here where they actually talk through the, you know, so this is obviously the internal schematic, but this boils down to, or this, you know, abstract from this is this block diagram where they, they describe why that, what that diode is doing, what the eye adjust is doing, um, what the over temp and over current protection, and it was not too complicated. So again, like I said, if you're interested in that stuff, I don't need it for what I'm trying to do. You know, I don't need to understand the internal workings of the device. I just need to know how to use the device. So I'm intentionally glossing over all of this, but yeah, I mean, if you're excited by it, check it out, it's worth it. So the only other thing to mention here with the adjustable voltage regulators, which is different to the other ones whereby for these adjustable voltage regular ICs, the adjust pin is here on the left, and you got V out in the middle and V in on the right. So previously we had V in and then common or ground and then V out. 
so I can't I can't three pins we had right this is the IC and then we had V in ground and then V out so for this one V out is in the middle V in adjust it's always good to just check out the pin out you know I always check even when I'm dealing with transistors BJT so yeah okay so let's talk about setting the voltage output so here I've got a formula which I'll explain in a minute don't worry about that so what we do with these ICs is we use this adjust pin to set the output voltage of the voltage regulator using a voltage divider network. So we use these two resistors here and you can see here we've got our V out from the voltage divider and then we've got that tapped into our adjust pin there. Usually, which is not the case for this one, so here I've just got two fixed resistors but what you'll often find is that you'll have one fixed resistor and then one potentiometer. Here I've got a big ugly looking one because I can't find my small ones. So um, I don't know what I've done with it. That's why I've got this ugly looking thing. So let's talk about how do we get these values. So for R1, which is the easiest one to do, usually it's going to be between 120 ohms and 1 kilo ohms. So R1, the value of R1 is going to be between 120 and 1 kilo ohms. You're going to see a lot of circuits, you know, what's most common is 220 ohms or 240 ohms. So for my circuit, I've gone with 1, one kilo ohms just because I've got so many 1 kilo ohm resistors. I just always use 1 kilo ohm resistors, but it's probably better to use 220 or 240. Again, not to delve too much into the reasons why for things. I did kind of rattle my brain about this. I went down some rabbit holes, but I realized I didn't need... To. Usually what I do is I go down a rabbit hole and then I'm like, oh... I don't need to understand all of this in order to be able to use the device and then I crawl back out the rabbit hole slowly <laughs> come back out into the light and I feel a bit better so uh, I'll explain briefly it has something to do with R1 being the reference voltage so if I check my if you you can try this yourself you check the voltage across here across R1 it's going to be 1.25 volts which is the way that the IC is designed to make this r1 as a reference voltage really quite clever to be honest with you and then so there needs to be like a minimum load of 10 milliamps in order for the circuit to work properly basically using v equals ir you know if you have 1.25 volts and then you need 10 milliamps then you need at least a minimum of 120 ohm resistor that's you know if you didn't understand that don't worry about it, it doesn't matter you don't need to know it just know that minimum 120 ohm resistor for r1 Okay, so once we've got R1, then we can find the value of R2 by doing some algebra on this equation. The only thing we need to do is we just need to pick a V out that we want. So, for example, if I pick, if I want my voltage, okay, I'll go with what I went with here. If I want my, my V out to be, I want my V out to be 7.5 volts. That means that on my output, I want 7.5 volts. Then what I do is I just substitute all of that into this equation here. So... I'm not going to do too much maths, honestly, don't worry about it. So V out is, what, 7.5 volts, which is equal to 1.25, 1 plus, and then R2 we don't have. That's what we're looking for, divided by R1, which in my case is 1 kilo ohms. Let's put 1,000. that's like a 2 but that is indeed a 7 so doing some algebra on this equation we get 1000 which is my value for R1 times by and then I'm going to do my V out which is 7.5 divided by 1.25 which is our reference in brackets again minus 1 and so if we do that that equals about 5000 or well, equals 5000 exactly actually so that means that R2 for us needs to be 5,000 ohms or 5 kilo ohms. So basically, just to go over that again, I've, this is the equation to figure out V out. So we've picked R1. We pick R1, give R1 a value, pick it. So between 120 and 1 kilo ohms, usually 220 or 240, I've gone with 1 kilo ohms. And then I've just substituted into this equation what I've picked. So V out 7.5 and then R1 is 1,000. R1 is 1000 
Then using algebra, rearrange this to solve it for R2, which is this. So R2 is equal to, so this whole thing is R2 is equal to 1000 times, then two brackets, 7.5 divided by 1.25 minus one. So R2 is equal to 5000. That's not too complicated, is it? So here, let's see how this works. So I've got my IC, then I've got my one kilo ohm resistor here, and then my five kilo ohm resistor here. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I've got my 15 volts coming in here. So if I check my output, which is this blue one here. So here to ground. And then we got 7.8 volts. So it matches my simulation. I wanted 7.5 and that was 7.8. I don't know why I got 7.8, but it works. <laughs> it's close enough, right? It's above, it's 7.5. So that, that goes. All right, so let's see if I can drive something with it. So I've got my motor, stick it in the ground, and then at the output, and there we go. I can still check the voltage, it's still the same. 7.8 volts, nice. Okay, so then what we could do to make things even better, you know, because right now I've just got, you know, my 7.5 volt voltage regulator. To make things even better, I can just replace this R2 with a potentiometer. So that's exactly what I've done here in this circuit. The exact same thing now. The only difference is so I've got my one kilo ohm resistor and then here now I've got zero to 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. So as I, as I rotate it, so if I check the resistance, so 10 kilo ohms of resistance. So if I turn this now down to five, I should get the same Okay, look, so 7.5 kilo ohms. Let's get it to five kilo ohms and then five. Okay, so we've got five kilo ohms of resistance there. So now I'm expecting, if I check on voltage and I just plug in my VCC over here now, if I check my output voltage, 7.8 volts, exactly the same. Nice, right? So, and then we should just be able to still drive the motor. Okay, so connect the motor to the output. All right, and then there we go. Beautiful. All right, now here's the fun part. So unlike with this one here, we couldn't change the voltage, but now we should be able to turn it up. And you can see it's going way faster. I mean, my camera can't even see that anymore. All right, and then so slow it down. Look at that. Speed it up, slow it down. Speed up. So now this is at max, right? So I've got 15 volts at my VCC. So let's see what voltage I've got. 13.45 volts. Obviously, you've got a dropout voltage. So 13.45 max here. This should be running hot. No, it's actually cool. Cool as a cucumber. All right, so 13.45, and then now if I turn this all the way down, what do we get? One volt. Interesting, right? Turn it up a bit. Five volts. It's just, it's just phenomenal, you know? So here now, you know, where in the last video I was using a Xenodiode to create like a customized voltage, now you can legit make a customized voltage. Either you can make a fixed customized voltage using two resistors, using you know this formula here that I showed you. Using this, right? Pick a value for R1, let's say 120, 220, you know, 500, 1K, whatever, and then find R2, and then just using, in case you want that again, this here is just going to be your R1 times your V out that you want divided by 1.25, which is fixed minus one. And that's it, man. I mean, this stuff is just, it's just brilliant. You know, I, I <laughs> every day I do this, I just enjoy it more and more. And I'm like, man, you know, like, like how many different ways now do I need to be able to control and, you know, change voltage? It's just... It's phenomenal, like, yeah. Anyways, I'm, I'm, not, I'm literally speechless from how much I'm enjoying this. So I'm hoping 
to move on from voltage regulators although i would love to if i'm honest with you and you know what maybe i can hold some of you guys uh to account for this you know i would like in a future video not right now but probably you know somewhere down the line to come back to these kind of circuits so the slow turn on 15 volt regulator and the 5 volt electronic shutdown regulator i really like the idea i, I kind of i like this uh I, I enjoy this this is brilliant but i'm gonna move on because i really do need to get into pwm stuff so although i've started my 555 timer i've got some pwm ic's and so i'm gonna start working on those which is probably gonna take me a long time i've got a bunch of exams coming up i've got uh an exam a report a report due an exam and a presentation so all due in like nine days so by the time you guys are watching this seven days so i don't know let's cry together <laughs> take care guys bye bye